All right, well, thanks very much for joining this, uh, this um, session on how to determine your optimal position sizing, given your strategy. My name is uh, Juan Colon. I'm a CEO with Darwin X, and uh, hopefully over the next uh, 35 minutes or so, I shall give you some pointers on how to figure that out for, for yourselves. Um, I'd very much like to have this as an interactive session. So if I should lose you at any point or whether you have any questions or any issues, please do let me know in the chat. I will try to answer there and then if I can. If I can't, I'll ask you to defer to either at the end of the webinar, where we'll have a Q&A session, or uh, just take it off privately, because uh, there might be some questions which, which we would better take offline. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get going. So let's get going on the agenda for today. Um, essentially, the, the core message of what I'd like to convey to you is that uh, the, your optimal position sizing is part of a framework and uh, by itself is not a silver bullet. And I'll explain to you why. Um, I'll explain a framework whereby we'll look at the, your strategy level risk management goals and then add, uh, how those get implemented in your money management rules or your optimal position sizes. And then we'll discuss some practical examples that you can find uh, at Darwin X uh, for free. So as I just said, so there's no uh, one size fits all to the bullet. Some people go around saying, well, you should always trade with the leverage of FYZ, uh, set your take profit at 20 pips and uh, your stop loss at 10 pips. That's just not the way things work because everybody has different trading styles. So we need to account for your personal preferences. And uh, to get there, it's, it's a bit of a personal discovery process. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to do a very condensed uh, version of that today. We'll discuss how you should start by your personal risk appetite. What are your goals when you trade? How much you, are you okay? Uh, how much are you targeting in terms of wins and how much are you okay using? Uh, that will in turn determine with how much capital you need to trade and not the other way around. So there's no way to multiply capital by 1,000 fold. You, you better have realistic goals. And then we'll discuss how the different degrees of freedom of a strategy, including the position size, get you to an optimal trade size. The most important lesson for today is that uh, you, you need to bear in mind the, the two levels of your risk management. The first one is your strategy level risk management goal, which we will summarize in uh, value at risk, the amount that you're okay losing the worst month every 20. And that given your strategy, which you should hopefully already have, you should have a pretty fine way to trade and not still be found, uh, finding it will translate into certain money management rules, including a trade level uh, size that uh, should be combined with your stop, stop loss and take profit, the leverage with which you enter trades, and very importantly, for how long you stick in trades. Um, throughout the webinar, we will be using free tools available from Darwin X to anyone um, using an MP4 brokerage account. So the, the tools that we, I will present, you can use 100% for free just by uh, providing us with your investor password and uh, username from MP, MP4. And on that basis, your data will be automatically imported into the tools and uh, the outputs that we'll discuss will be available. We will never uh, email you or spam you for that, but we also happen to be a broker, which is very likely cheaper than most brokers and uh, is uh, has got a pretty good reputation. And also, you should know that we run a monthly contest where we pay our customers 6,000 euros for trading investably, including trading with uh, an adequate uh, trade, trade size. So, on to risk management. Uh, Different people have different risk appetites. Some people want uh, low risk, low return strategies and all their um, want is preserve the capital. Uh, there are other people who, who really go for high risk, high return and uh, losing is not an issue to them. But the point is different people have different goals. And the most important question is what loss comfortable taking uh, as you trade? Uh, and uh, there are different degrees of uncertainty, of course, when, you, when you're trading in your first day, a uh, set of things can happen. You could have you know, a positive day or a negative day. Over time, this will, be, this will compound and somehow compensate. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, over one week, more things could happen than in one day. So you could both make more on the top hand side and lose more in that one week. And then, of course, if you take that further and trade full time, eventually you will have spent, say, one month trading. And of course, in one month, more losses and more profits can accrue. And the question for, for you is how much you're okay losing the worst month every 20, because that is the first input into your uh, trade level management strategy. So different people will have different goals for this. Uh, for instance, if you had a goal uh, of risking 15% of your capital the worst month every 20, then you would have what we call a value at risk of, uh, say, 15%. And uh, different people trade with different values at risk. Let me show you the site at Darwin X. Now, Please allow me to share, because I'm now sharing my browser and I think you can't see it yet. Can people confirm if they, if they can now see my Google Chrome browser with Darwin X displayed on top? So, for instance, I'm just showing you uh, the, the strategy by one of the traders at Darwin X. And uh, this trader, for instance, trades with a value at risk of about 10%, as you can see here, which means uh, in uh, the worst month every 20, he's expected to, to lose going forward 10% or more. If you want to know what your personal value at risk, given your current strategy is, all you need to do, as I said, would be to sign up, create a username for free. And the, these would be one of the inputs that you would get here. So you would see here the value at risk with uh, which the strategy is, uh, is traded. So going back to our web webinar, uh, the important thing for you to define before you even get can get to an optimal position um, optimal position size is for you to, to understand how much you stand to lose. For instance, if someone was trading with a value at risk of 20% and he had a capital of 10,000, an equity in his account of 10,000, then his risk appetite would be $2,000 per month, which is the product of these two. And, uh, and that's the kind of the, the first thing you should figure out before you even start looking for an op optimal position size, because obviously it would be the right from this and not be an, an input into uh, risk estimation a word of caution um, obviously there are two ways to trade one is to trade uh, hoping that your average trade makes money in which case you will get your money back and then some some and then another way to trade, and unfortunately that's the way uh, most people tend to, turn, tend to trade, is to pretty much risk everything on every trade, which is not a very smart thing to do, because if you risk everything on, on, on every trade, you're as good as your last trade. If it goes well, of course, you make a lot of money, but if it, go, it goes badly, you lose everything. So a word of caution there, if the value at risk you get when you sign up to Darwin X is higher than uh, 20%, you're possibly in danger zone. And uh, I could show you plenty of examples, probably beyond the scope of today for that. But um, most people who trade with a value risk of more than 20% end up losing all they've got. And it's not a nice thing to see. Which means the way to stay safe is uh, for you to trade uh, capital, which is at least five times bigger than the loss you're okay having the worst month every 20. For instance, if you're okay losing $2,000 the worst month every 20, this means you should have at least $10,000 in your account uh, for, for you to be able to trade consistently for the long run. Any questions so far? Okay, looks like we're still good. So that brings us, of course, to, uh, to kind of landing all this into or how was capital calculated. So the capital is really the division of uh, to um, $2,000 of risk appetite, which is the amount you're okay losing, by uh, the 20% value uh, at risk, which gets you to the 10,000. So 10,000 times 20% would give you 
2,000 dollars of worst loss. If you're uh, planning on losing 2,000 and you're still trading with say uh, 2,000 of capital, that is uh, not a good idea because that will force you to lever up your trades significantly. And if you lever up your trades significantly, there is bound to be uh, there is bound to be a moment in the market, it could be non-farm payroll or something else, where the market moves so much that your highly levered trade is kicked out and it wipes your account with it. Uh, uh, it won't happen overnight because these events do not happen every day, but they do happen in a year and eventually all the chickens come, come home to roost. In terms of uh, the, the other question I had from Linda, why it's called a risk appetite? Well, it really depends on, on the personal appetite for returns that you have. So obviously, when you trade, you should know that there's, there's, no, there's no such thing as risk-free returns. So if you want to, say, make 70% uh, per year, then you should be willing to put some amount at risk because otherwise you're not going to make 70% per year, regardless of how good your strategy is. And that's really your risk of appetite. So the, the trade-off is to know, and we'll, we'll do some numbers later, but if you're planning on, say, making 70% per year, which is about 5% uh, or 5.5% per, per month, you should be willing to uh, lose 20% the worst month every 20, because otherwise there's no way you will return the 70%. You just need to take some, so, some risk. Uh, and a silver bullet, uh, apologies for the non-natives out there, it's a uh, silver bullet is like the the solution that solves all the problems. And uh, the, the point I tried to make is that there is no such thing as a silver bullet. You, you just have to, it's a process where you do trial and error until you converge on what's right for you, your personal risk appetite. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so with that intro, uh, the like main, main takeaways is uh, before you even can try to figure out what your optimal trade size is, you have to know what your monthly risk appetite is. Because if you don't know that, there's just no way to determine the optimal trade size. So uh, that, that's, I guess, the first point. And, and the best way to, to figure out what your risk appetite is uh, would be to try to get an assessment of your monthly value at risk, which you could get, for instance, for free from uh, DarwinX. You sign up. We tell you for your strategy, just like we've told uh, th this user. So for instance, this user did upload his strategy and we, uh, the feedback we would have given to him is if you traded the way you traded in the last year, uh, you could expect to lose between 5.5 and 12%, which is what you can see here, the worst month every 20. And the answer for you guys uh, will be uh, personal to each of you, and I can't give it to you without knowing your strategy. So I very much encourage you to sign up and uh, and get that estimate for you. And on the basis of that, say, for instance, in this case, if this trader had $10,000 uh, in his account and he was trading with a 12% monthly value at risk, he could lose uh, $1,200 per month in the worst month. That, that would be his calculation. And for you to know yours, you would have to do the, the same process. As I repeat, it's free. And there's no, we will not spam you or anything if you sign up. Which brings us one step closer to the money, money management rules that determine your optimal trade size. So, important, a lot of traders trade with way too much um, lack of discipline when they trade. So, for instance, they, they could be trading a lot of different assets at the same time. They trade at very different times throughout the day. They use a whole bunch of indicators, uh, different uh, time frames in the charts. And then, of course, when you have all these many moving parts, it's very, very difficult to get to a point where you can converge on an optimal trade size because uh, the, you really don't have one strategy. You have 15, which, which is about the same thing as saying that you don't have anything because, uh, you know, it, it, you can't do everything at once and do it well. So the important message is do not try to figure out your optimal trade size until you have figured out what your trading strategy is. So, um, for instance, a trading strategy could be the, the best or the simplest would be I trade uh, for about between four and eight hours in the 12 hour time frame in the euro dollar and Canadian dollar. And uh, I have a stop loss at plus 25 uh, pips and a take profit at plus 50. Um, and uh, I trade with a leverage of, say, four to one, because th that's what I try to do. And that's something that you could do. If you trade in, uh, you know, you play some trades for five minutes and some trades for five days, 
in completely different asset classes and so on and so forth, then this, uh, this is no way. You're not ready to try to find your optimal trade size because uh, you don't have a strategy yet. Okay, so with that caveat in mind, let's get going. Uh, and uh, explain why the, you know why it's just so important to focus on different time frames. For instance, what I've got here is the uh, a plot of the daily volatilities for different pairs at different times of the day. And, and as you can see, uh, the say the let's say let's focus on the euro dollar. So the euro dollar is a lot of different assets at different points in the day. So uh, beyond it, it, it really depends on the on the Asian session. Not much volatility because nothing nothing much is going on. Uh, so if, there's a question here on what I said what the stops should be. Um, I just made up the numbers. So those numbers are completely uh, and possibly unrealistic. I just made them up. The, the point is you have to figure that for yourself, and I'll, I'll show you today how to do that uh, as we go along in the, in the webinar. The, the point is, though, that no one should tell you what your take profit should be. It's you who has to figure out for yourself, given your trading style and your trading strategy. Okay, so uh, the point I was making is be careful as you as you try to figure out your strategy when you pick at what times of the day you trade because the, the volatilities of the market are wildly different. So, for instance, uh, at this point in time, the volatility could be about 10 times the volatility if you trade uh, about uh, 10 hours earlier. So you should factor that in into your um, strategy formulation process. And then, of course, even more important, this is you know very simple things like uh, be wearing of news releases. This is uh, the volatility of the of the market in the euro dollar, uh, slightly before and after a non farm payroll. And as you can see here, the volatility spikes at the moment when the news are uh, released, and it continues to be quite high even for uh, kind of one more than a, one hour later. So that you have to figure out if you're someone who trades the news. You, your optimal trade size should be X. If you're not trading the news, then you can afford to take a lot more leverage because the, there will not be such mild spikes in the, in the market. Why is this important and why is this helpful? Well, if you really focus down to the, to the bits that allow you to be concentrated and uh, get to a point where you're seeing if your strategy works or not, this will reduce your anxiety. It will allow you to see whether you're doing well or not doing well on your strategy. And once you see what's not Working about the strategy, you can start optimizing, including the optimal trade size. And then when, when you come to formulating your optimal trade size, and I'll, again, I'll show you later how to do this, but the important thing to take into account is that uh, different strategies have different optimal trade sizes. So for instance, let me show you, uh, let, let's think of a strategy which places one trade per day or 21 trades a month, trades with a leverage of 10 to 1 for each of those trades and hangs on to those trades for one day. Well, that strategy in the worst month every 20 could lose about 40% of its capital. If we took another, about another strategy which places a, uh, about two and a half times the number of trades and the trades with twice the leverage, but doesn't stay in the market for so long, instead of one day, it stays for four hours. That's a comparable way to get to the same value at risk with completely different strategies. This one trades a lot more often in shorter time frames and still is as risky as the one above uh, by taking twice the leverage than this one. So the optimal trade size for this strategy and that strategy would be different, even though ultimately they would end up with the right about the same value at risk on a monthly basis. Or you could even take it further if, if you just trade uh, in, in, in the RE timeframes, you could afford to take up to, say, 100 trades a month with a leverage of 31 and still have the same risk as, a, as the strategy above. What's the point I'm trying to make here? Well, the, the, the risk of your trades is linear in the number of trades. So if you take double the amount of trades in a given month and the trades are the same, then you'll take pretty much the, the, double the risk. And it's uh, and it scales by the square root of time. So if you're, uh, if you're taking a trade for four hours, uh, then the risk of a, a trade for 24 hours, which is about six times longer, will be roughly uh, the square root of 24 
over uh, four, which is the square root of six, which would be two and a half times. So if you take the trade uh, for uh, 24, 24 hours with the same leverage as a trade of uh, four hours, then you're taking two and a half times the risk. And that's something you need to figure out when you're, when you're defining your optimal position size. Now you're probably saying, okay, this is all very nice. Uh, so how about some practical examples here? Well, before we get into that, I'd just like to show you what the differences can be by trading a strategy with, a, with one amount of risk and another amount of risk. In the, on the left-hand side of the, of the slide, We've got a strategy which is trading with a lot of value at risk. It's, it's taking way too much leverage in each of the trades. And as you can see here, the returns in April and May and June essentially blew up the account and it's lost 100% of what it did have. Now, if instead of taking that strategy and applying the wrong trade size to it, you had taken something more rational, you could see that there are a whole bunch of uh, retail traders out there who have winning strategies and managed to destroy those by taking way too much leverage on a trade basis. Do you guys understand why this is possible? Yeah, so, but this is very, very important. So it could very well be if, if you have had a, like a bad results for a while, it could be that you're thinking that your timing is wrong, that you're kind of entering the time at the wrong, the market at the wrong times, and perhaps that's not at all the issue. The issue could very well be that you're trading with way too much leverage. And by trading with less leverage, the market wouldn't have kicked you out of the positions and you would have made money. So this is a, a very important uh, application. And actually, this is the one that kills about 99% of retail traders. It's not that they're bad. It's actually that they're just trading with uh, too, much, too much leverage in the individual positions. Yeah, so a very important question of uh, why do values at risk of 20% uh, or more blow up sooner or later? Well, uh, the reason for this is when you're trading with a value at risk of 20%, this means that on a bad month, you're going to at least wipe out 20% of your account. And uh, normally when that happens, then you're kind of tempted to try to make good for it. And uh, you either try to take more trades than you usually would, or you, you become less demanding and, and how you take those trades, or you put in more leverage on each of those trades, and that's, that, that actually sends you right down the path to disaster. So on the one hand, it's mathematics. If you trade with a value at risk of more than 20%, then at some point, something will happen. So for instance, on the 15th of January, who would have known that the Swiss franc would explode and the market would have moved as much as it did as it did move? If on that day you were in the market with some leverage, well, you could have been lucky and be on the right side of the trades, but then you could have been unlucky and be on the wrong side of the trades and essentially lose just a complete bunch of your account without in a single trade. Right. And then your question is, which is a totally right question, is what risk per trade means a value risk of 20? And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. So. I'm going to show you the tools at Darwinx that allow you to figure that out for yourself. So let's start with the particular strategy. So this is the strategy by one user at random of Darwinx. This could be you as well. As I said, it's 100% free. So when you enter Darwinx, you will see that your trades over the last, since you started trading, would be plotted on your trading journal, which is what we're seeing here. So for instance, uh, this trader uh, took a trade for, in this case, uh, six hours. At 1.46 on the 3rd of March of 2015, he went short the euro dollar and he stood in there for about six hours. And if you look here, so I'll, I'll ask you to look here and then I'll go back to the position. Look at this part of the screen. You see that uh, he took this trade with a deleverage of 6.6. .6. And in this case, deleverage is a measure of, uh, of leverage since he was trading the euro dollar the, this trade was a leverage of, of about seven to one, and you can see it plotted here on the green on this green scale. So he took a the, the risk was uh, seven to one. Similarly, we could go to this particular other trade, which he did take with uh, uh, a deleverage of of ten. So these are the individual leverage decisions that the trader had, 
And uh, we tell you that on the basis of those leverage decisions, so for instance, we're looking at the 4th of March, 2015, we can go to another chart here and see the value at risk for March, 2015. So the way this trader was trading, we can tell him and we could tell you that at this point uh, in, in time, he was risking 10% of his account the worst month every 20. Now, how do you get from the individual trade level decisions to the strategy level value at risk? Well, by placing individual trades. So each, each of these trades are, are plotting on the one hand, the leverage of the, of the trade that, you that was taken against the duration of the particular trade. So for instance, this trade lasted for uh, six hours on May the 18th and it was leveraged eight to one. And because it was placed on this line, we, on, the, on, the, on the blue line, we can essentially say, okay, well, if you always trade these amount of trades for this duration with this leverage, then in May, your value at risk would have been this much, whatever shown here. And on this basis, on an iterative basis, you can essentially figure out, okay, well, my value at risk right now is say 40% and uh, perhaps that's too high and it's 40% because I'm trading my trades with a leverage of say 15 to one. So if I want to get to a level where I'm risking uh, half that without changing anything else uh, in my strategy other than the trade level uh, leverage, then all I need to do is just uh, do that. It's half the leverage with which I enter my trades and I will have half my risk and over time, if I always take my trades with the, the optimal position size, I will have converged on the, my personal optimal position size. Did that make sense? So it's really an iterative process. First, you start where you are today uh, by just signing up and getting your value at risk figure, which say it could be 10%. And then you know, hey, you know, I think 10% is perhaps too little for me. I would like 20% because I, I want to achieve 70% uh, risk per uh, return per year. So what, what do I do? Well, I essentially continue trading the way I have been up to now, but doubling the leverage for my trades. It, it's a pretty simple framework, which is, okay, what is my risk appetite? Uh, my risk appetite is, say, I want to, I've got an account of $10,000 and I want to make... 70% return per year. And uh, basically then I know that for me to make that 70% that per year, I have to take at least 20% monthly value at risk, but not more because as I said, it, it, you could blow up. Well then, you know, th that's how you go about it. You see what your current value at risk is. If it's below the 10% or the 20%, then you would need to take the trades with more leverage. And if it's above, then you would have to reduce the leverage. But ultimately you converge on a trade level uh, leverage that tells you what what's the right thing for your strategy given your personal risk appetite. Do you guys have questions about this now? Or maybe it was too complex. If any of you guys is a member of, of Darwin X, I'll be, we could do this on the basis of your personal strategy um, by looking it up here now. Okay, so looks like no one is, but that's pretty much the, the process. So the process is to figure out what your current value at risk is here, and then see, how your each of your individual trades has been taking what what type of risk if you're above the target then you should reduce the risk the, the leverage and if you're below the target you should increase it that's it all right so that was pretty much what i had uh, in mind for 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 today uh I very much look forward to any questions that you might have now on anything that I've covered today or anything more general about, uh, about trading. So how, the, how are the values at risk calculated? Well, uh, they are actually 
done on a very simple basis. What we do is we take, so let, let's say uh, this was the strategy and we know what the, the trader did over the last month, each of these trades. What we do is we take uh, a, a lot of simulations of, um, of, of this sequence of trades. So on day one, you take a trade with a leverage of 20 to one. On day two, you take a, a trade of, with a leverage of uh, 30 to one, whatever it is that the trader did. And then you keep doing that and see what could have happened given how the market moves. And at the end of that, you see a lot of scenarios where uh, either the trader has won or he has lost uh, through simulations. And then we get to the, to the value at risk by looking at the worst, what, what did happen the worst month every 20. And on that basis, then you, you go about and you read the bar and, uh, and see the, the final result. That's essentially the, the way it's done. It's, you simulate a lot of things that could happen in the future. And you you look at a certain position in the in the distribution, like doing it. Let's go back here. The process would be, we would plot all the outcomes over one month of trading without risk, and then we would look at the worst five percent, and this would be the line that would tell us what the loss is in the worst month every twenty. The five percent probability interval. If you guys know statistics, this is just like the the probability density function. Yeah, so, you know, Mr. C, if you if you want to get in touch, for instance, you can uh, just sign up to DarwinX, uh, upload your strategy, and then I can explain exactly to you how that how that's done. No problem. Any more questions, guys? Okay. Well, looks like uh, it, it's all either so confused, you're all so confused that you don't dare asking questions, which I hope it's not the case, or you for, um, I've explained everything so perfectly that it's all clear. So yeah, thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from any of you guys if you have questions. My personal email address is juan at .com, And I would be very uh, happy to take your feedback for this. All right, take care. Bye-bye.